Hey, welcome back, gang, to the Ball and Breakfast podcast. I'm Patrick Miller alongside Wayne Pua. Uh, Tonight, we are breaking down the NFL. Uh, We're a few weeks away here from the regular season starting. Uh, With all that in mind, uh, Wayne and I decided to put together our AFC and NFC predictions for each division. Uh, We've also uh, conjured up some, some playoff predictions and who we think will be in the Super Bowl this year as well as picking uh, season winners for different awards from MVP to the defensive, you know, award, uh, top offense, rookies, coach. Uh, So we'll break all that down tonight on this episode. Um, If you're with us, you know, via YouTube, you know, subscribe to our channel. If you're on Anchor, Spotify, Apple, you know, follow us, comment, uh, review us in any way. Uh, on Instagram, we've we've times uh, our follow our followership by 500 percent as of last week. So we are totally kicking ass on that front. We're going to continue to add followers as we go. So follow along on YouTube. We're doing stories. We're doing posts. Uh, we're, we're we're splicing up reels here. Wayne's kind of the the mastermind behind it all. So uh, we'll continue to move along here with the with the podcast. But just glad you're joining us now. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to kick it over to Wayne to to start us off with the AFC and a division of his choice. Thanks, Pat. Yeah, so I was looking at, I'm going to start with the North, actually. Uh, I think uh, my team I'm predicting are the uh, Baltimore Ravens to win the division there. Um, I think, you know, a lot of people, I'm not the only one, but it's like last year was kind of crazy with regards to their injury bug. Uh, you know, this year they're going to have... Uh, you know, a full roster uh, of healthy players. Their offensive line is going to be a lot healthier. They signed some uh, players uh, going into the season to help uh, out with their offensive line with Morgan Moses. Uh, so, you know, that's going to be a little bit better drafting. They had like the best draft, I think, in the, you know, I think we talked about that. So, um, yeah, they're, you know, with uh, um, with Linderbaum and then also uh, Hamilton in the secondary uh, their secondary is going to be back to kind of that dangerous secondary. I think it is uh, as well. I think they also just signed Kyle, Kyle Floor, I believe too. So it's like their secondary is as good as anything uh, ever really. <laughs> and uh, and uh, they might even get Ojabo like mid season too. I think uh, their uh, second round pick or second, yeah, I think the second round pick, but he was like definitely like people were thought like mock drafts uh, that he was like going to be the first pick overall. So it's like, you know they definitely are you know going to be getting a stud uh mid-season uh to go along with their already established defense so um you know there's a lot of questions i think on the offensive side you know they lost hollywood brown and, and all but you know they, they definitely shored up their tight ends a little bit um and bateman had a really good second half of, of the season there uh so i think that you know overall they, they seem to be good doing I think this year they're going to have uh, you know a different looking year, but I think they're they're going to uh, have a step up. And they also, yeah, their the running back field uh, is back to normal with uh, uh, Dobbins too. So and Gus Edwards. So I mean, there's a lot of things I think that are going for the Ravens overall. Um, I'll shut up now. Would love to hear. Did you pick the Ravens, Pat, or was there another team that you had in mind? No, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, you know, I you know we didn't talk about the team that uh, you know represented the AFC North last year in the Super Bowl. Um, that's fine. I think that, you know, with what Baltimore has in place, I know they, you know, they lost Hollywood Brown. We, we kind of talked about their lack of, uh, receiving depth, but kind of reminds me of just a high powered, uh, college team with, you know, QB and a running back who could play the option, uh, kind of all day, every day with Lamar Jackson and JK Dobbins coming back and you know, Mark Andrews was a stud, uh, last year, at tight end, probably one of the top two performers of the position, and then, like you said, uh, defensively, their secondary, they brought over Marcus Williams. Uh, they've got Marlon Humphrey at one of the corner positions, Marcus Peters at another, Chuck Clark at safety. John Harbaugh, I don't want to ever you know, count him out. He's a great coach. I just feel like he strikes the right balance of um, you know, X's and O's and being kind of a you know, player coach. He understands, you know, he, he uses all of his words carefully. I feel like even talking about Lamar's contract situation. So I think that's another motivator for Lamar and the team going forward is that, hey, you never know what could happen if this is the last year. It's the last year, so you got to make the most of it. But, uh, you know, I just think it's a team that's uh, really mature and uh, ready to bounce back here in uh, 2022, 2023. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I think Lamar's going to have a bounce back year. Uh, he literally played with, like, backup second, third stringers and people that just got off, you know, that are, like, 30-plus years old and – uh, really couldn't find a team out there and, you know, 
uh, mid season. So, and people forget, yeah, they were like, uh, I think they're like eight and three and like just really red hot. Uh, you know, like no, like when, when they were at their peak last year, they like, I don't, I don't know if there was any team that, they, that could have beat them, you know? So I think that they'll have a better bounce back year, um, this coming season. So, um, and with that, I guess I'll move to my next, uh, uh, I'll move to the the AFC South here. Um, I picked uh, the Colts actually. So, yeah, I picked the Colts. Uh, you know, I think last year they they just barely missed the playoffs, I believe. But you know, still, I think they had like a nine and eight record, I believe. So, uh, but you know, they have a really good roster. Uh, you know, the the Bears uh, took uh, <laughs> took some of their management uh, with them. You know, so uh, yeah, with that though, you know, adding Matt Ryan, I think you know, I think that definitely elevates them. Uh, you're going to have, uh, uh, the reigning, uh, is it offensive here with uh, Taylor and everything? So, you know, I, th I think they'll be uh, better off coming into next season, uh, offensively. Um, and yeah, I think they're, they're probably going to be a better defensive team, uh, with, you know, uh, a little bit more seasoning uh, under them. So, uh, overall, I think that the, you know, there's a lot of questions in that division, I think is the biggest thing. Uh, and for me, I was like, yeah, I think the Colts are probably have the most continuity with uh, upgrades in, in terms of their talent. So, yeah. But what are yeah. your thoughts? Pat? I agree with you again. I like the linebacking core there. I think that they've established a tone on the defensive side that even though they lost Eber Flus and uh, a lot of coaches uh, on that side, it's just one of those units that has played together for a while. Um, they'll bring a lot of confidence there. Matt Ryan brings a lot of leadership over. I know he's kind of in his twilight years here, but they just need somebody to kind of be consistent, you know, behind center. And I feel like, you know, Carson Wentz was doing enough of that up until, you know, the very end of the season where it kind of fell apart. So I just think they need a steady hand there. Um, it feels like Tennessee's just taking a step back. I mean, Tannehill seems pretty against, uh, you know, grooming a rookie quarterback. And, you know, you can't just lose A.J. Brown and expect, uh, you know, Robert Woods coming off a torn ACL to come in and just, you know, uh, replace that kind of production, uh, always seemed like a very top heavy offense as it was. So, mm -hmm. um, I just think that'll be a problem for Tennessee where, you know, last year they, you know, found their way to being a, a one seed, which is commendable. And I like Mike Vrabel, but, um, that's all I can really say. And then I, I don't have much else to say about the, the, the other teams in the division, like Jacksonville, Houston, and just, I think they're way behind. I think Jacksonville's moving in the right direction they spent a ton of money but it's just like I, yeah well, you know this will be lawrence's year too hopefully he shines but there's not much else there that i like yeah for sure and i i do think that the texans uh i think davis mills is like kind of underrated basically <laughs> he's he's like is he that good i don't know maybe he's that good uh so uh yeah they just seen us around more talent i think around and uh who knows what will happen with the texans but they're definitely a couple years away i would say with regards to that, oh yeah, and the Colts also added Gilmore too. So one of the best corners, uh, you know, even even at his age, I think he's like 30, 32 or whatever now. So even at that age, he's still one of the best corners in the game. So um, yeah, I think their team just got better in this offseason. And uh, I think they're more in the upward trend, uh, at least for the next couple of years, I think with Matt Ryan. So yeah, cool. Um, and with regards to uh, the East, uh, AFC East, I, I had to go with the Bills on this one. Like, I think a lot of people are either predicting the goal of the way or making a deep uh, kind of playoff run here. So, you know, um, they they got uh, they got better. <laughs> uh, I think they, they did add uh, Jamison Crowder, in, you know, in the kind of slot position. Uh, I think one of my favorite rookies that I wish the Bears draft, Khalil Shakur as well is on the roster, but you know, you looked at what they did like uh, last season and, you know, and in that playoff uh, run for that playoff game, you know, I think was it the, the chiefs uh, that was just back and forth, you know, and I, I think that they're going to take that experience and build off of it. Um, not too much uh, uh, players kind of left or not, not too many changing parts. Uh, I think they got Von no too. So it's like, they only got really got better there. So um, yeah. So my pick, is the buck or the, the bills um didn't really see too many of the other teams getting too much better to make any i think significant changes there uh so yeah what are your thoughts pat did you pick them too or do you have a surprise team no i'm with you i mean buffalo uh was right there last year with the kansas city chiefs i mean just to go uh shot for shot with patrick mahomes at the end of that game i mean that was it was pretty awesome seeing them go into overtime you just kind of knew whoever 
you know, got the coin toss in their favor, was, we're probably just going to run it down for a touchdown in the game. And, and that's exactly what happened. So Buffalo comes back, like you're saying, with majority of the same, you know, offense, uh, you know, Gabriel Davis, you know, kind of waiting to see if he'll have a breakout year this year um, at wide receiver. And then, you know, like you said, Von Miller kind of shoring up that pass rush. I mean, I like their secondary as it was. I mean, I just think adding some more pressure uh, up front is going to help them out a lot on the defensive side. Um, yeah, Miami is getting a ton of fanfare just with, you know, Tyreek Hill coming to town. I mean, they added like five running backs. <laughs> they were all like, part of fantasy teams last year. I was just like, how many more running backs are you going to just steal from across the league? I think they picked up, you know, Mostert and uh, uh, I'd have to go through kind of each one of the running backs, but it legitimately feels like they got five guys who could be like fantasy starters. But uh, it just it just feels like a little too flashy for me. I don't know if, you know, two is ready to just kind of lead all those personalities and like take this offense to another level. Like I think he can be competent. I'm just, I'm just not as sure if they're even, you know, going to be the second best team in that division. Cause it seems like, you know, even if new England's got a kind of a decrepit roster around Mac Jones and, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, Bill Belichick and stuff, it's like, I still think the smarts are there to kind of, you know, maneuver their way into the second seed. Like they, like they're capable yeah. of doing. So uh, I think Buffalo is the cream of the division. I'll just, you know, stay with them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I do agree. I think the Dolphins, it'll be interesting if they can like uh, build off of last season. Like, pe- like people, it's like, yeah, they were nine and eight, right? Like they, they, they were, they, they actually made a little bit of a run and all that. So it's like, you know, they, they, they do have some places, pieces in place and they did get like Teron Armstead. Yeah. Uh, Hill as well. And then added Melvin Ingram on defense. So it's like, they are trying to position themselves, but yeah, the biggest question is to, uh, um, and then, yeah, they're gonna have to see the bills and the pats, uh, was it uh, two times each, I think this season, right? So, um, a lot of question marks, uh, so it's hard to go in with a ton of confidence. Um, so yeah, but yeah, we could definitely give it at that bills seem like the overwhelming favorite, I think, uh, to win that division. So, um, moving on to the West, uh, this was definitely a fun one. AFC West last but not least, but like all the teams got better. I think, uh, this off season, uh, whether by draft or. Uh, definitely free agency for a lot of them too. So, but I I have the Chargers uh, taking the division here. Um, they just they just balled out, <laughs> you know, with Khalil Mack now paired up with Bosa. That you know having two ends of that caliber, um, it, I think that just says a lot of what they're trying to do there. Also, J.C. Jackson missed an interception. Like that's a deadly combination to have. So. Opposite uh, Asane Samuels Jr. and, and Derwin uh, James, who they, who they just uh, I think resigned, uh, and also Bryce Callahan at the at the slot as well. So one of the best slot people I know. He played for the Bears and did an excellent job at the slot. So yeah, team is stacked. Uh, offense kind of stayed the same, and and that's not a bad thing. I think that adds some continuity. I think to uh, to Justin Herbert and what he's trying to do over there uh, has you know one of the best wide receiver com- combinations there and. Uh, you know, solid offensive line and, you know, uh, one of the better uh, running backs, dual threat running backs, I think, in the NFL. So, yeah, it's it's hard to kind of go against the Chargers. Uh, but again, a lot of the, the teams around in that division, I think, got a little bit better. You know, you can definitely speak uh, you know, to the Raiders. I think they definitely got better and they made a little bit of a playoff run, too. So, you know, uh, a lot of yeah, and there's also Russell Wilson. So, you know, we could definitely go down the line there. But Pat would love to hear what are your thoughts on my division pick? I picked the exact same winner. I <laughs> didn't mean to do this to you, but uh, legitimately, I'm uh, I'm sharing pretty much all those points with you. I their offensive line even took a step with Rashawn Slater. You know, they drafted Zion Johnson, Corey Lindsley. You know, is there? It's just like they they've graded out. They've graded out pretty high. You know, for line and you know, I could expect Mike Williams to take a little bit of a step with Herbert. Um, you love Keenan Allen, uh, you know, Austin Eckler, you know, as a fantasy monster, I just kind of feel like this is their year. It's their time. They got a lot tougher bringing in Khalil Mack. I mean, I feel like it was kind of the defensive end that seemed a little bit soft from them, but, uh, you know, I expect them to be fully in it this year and, uh, I have really high expectations for them as a team, but, uh, it's not to say that division is going to be a cakewalk. I think they will be one of the lower seeded division winners, but that's no slight to the team itself. It's just, it's going to be a dog fight. Yeah, no, for sure. I agree. I think, yeah, I was definitely, you know, I definitely have a friend that's a Raiders fan uh, and, you know, they did get better. They, I, I think uh, they, you know, Josh McDaniels, so I was kind of 
debating between both those teams but yeah it's hard to pick a division winner it's definitely going to be a dog fight but yeah it's hard to go against seeing Khalil Mack and Bosa and JC Jackson and then also having to stop uh Justin Herbert and that uh that firepower that they have there so um but yeah so I I think that's it for me here uh yeah uh would love to hear I guess your your NFC picks uh Pat yeah sure um so kind of looking at the north I think this is a slam dunk for me it's going to be the Green Bay Packers um you know I think after losing Devontae Adams, everybody wanted to think like, all right, that's it. Like Green Bay is finally going to take a step back. The other teams in the North are going to step up and, you know, be a little bit more competitive, but it's essentially like nothing else happened from the North. It was, it was kind of a quiet off season. I feel like for the other three teams and, you know, I liked what the Packers did with their draft. I mean, they went out and they got, you know, a couple of defensive high impact players in the first round, you know, really kind of shored up some weaknesses uh, in the front seven. Um, you know, for them itself, they're, you know, returning Aaron Jones and uh, Dylan at running back. I feel like those two are going to be relied upon more heavily this year than ever before. And I think that might be a better mix for uh, Aaron Rodgers at at this stage of his career, but also just kind of taking a page out of the 49ers book. I mean, I feel like, you know, shore up the D, you know, kind of have, um, you know, a, a cast of, you know, relative no-namers at the wide receiver position, just like expect maybe a breakout here or two from one of those guys. But, you know, if anything, you know, keep the ground game going, you know, a lot of screen passing, things like that. But uh, I feel like you can always rely on 12 to get you a big win. And um, I feel like less of the onus is going to be on him and it's going to be, you know, kind of squarely on the defense to just, you know, close down um, games against other North competitors. So um, I don't have a lot of confidence, the other three teams to really even make the playoffs. So, um, it's just kind of how I'm feeling right now, but, but what do you think? Yeah, it's it's one of those reluctant things. I feel like that we're like, yeah, let's let's try to look at this rationally uh, as as people with brains and all that with college educated brains. And it's like, yeah, uh, we, we can't confidently just say that any of the other teams. Uh, yeah, you know, the Bears. Hey, look, uh, would love to ha- have this, but most likely it's not going to happen. So um yeah, and I mean, definitely the Vikings can you know make a little bit of a push there, but you know uh, if you were to compare them with the Packers, you got to pick the Packers. I think with their defense that they have, and obviously Aaron Rodgers and the run game. So, um, and offensive line hopefully will be healthy for them for their sake, uh, not for a Bears fan's sake. But yeah, I think they'll be I think they'll be better uh, going in, into next season. So yeah, that sounds pretty good. Um, NFC South. Uh, kind of a similar division to me is the NFC North. I, I feel like it's going to be very top heavy this year, which is a little bit different than in past years, but um, Tampa Bay is the cream of the crop in that division. I mean, to to just have Tom Brady back is, is just slam dunk number one. And then, you know, to kind of go out and get Russell Gage and Julio Jones to add to the wide receiving core, you know, getting Fournette back. Uh, you got Mike Evans. Godwin will hopefully be back at some point. Sounds like, you know, offensive line is pretty strong still. I know they lost uh, Kappa uh, to the Bengals, but in the same sense, it feels like, you know, the offensive line grades out pretty high. Um, defense looks to be pretty stout too. I know they uh, won't have Ndamukin Sue up front, but again, feel like there's a lot of uh, returning, you know, members of that team along with Akeem Hicks from the Bears. So I kind of feel like wherever they've found subtractions with that team, they've they've found their additions too. And it's just like, you know, to kind of, uh, you know, move into the Todd Bolt era as well. Um, it'll be interesting because I think that he's, you know, he's had his time as a head coach with the Jets and, you know, it didn't work out for him, but I always liked him as a coach. You know, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Lovey Smith and, you know, maybe a little bit like Mike Tomlin also just like, a, you know, guys really, um, really strong as a defensive coordinator, but it also kind of like, a, you know, just uh, kind of leads, uh, you know, through his actions and, yeah, I think he commands a lot of respect in that in that locker room, and uh, it allows Tom Brady to kind of be free on offense. I mean, he doesn't have to, you know, compete with Arians anymore for, you know, control. I feel like that's part of why he left New England. So uh, we'll see where it goes, but I think no matter what, this team's going to be kind of uh, easily uh, skating into the into the playoffs this year without you know many hiccups. Yeah, no, for sure. It's again, it's hard to say like like any of these teams. Again, with confidence. Again, using our college educated, all college educated brains to be like, yeah, this uh, this team, uh, uh, you know, is going to make a run against them. Um, 
Yeah, I would definitely have to go with the Buccaneers. Uh, if I were to, it's certainly if I were to bet and everything. Um, the dark horse that I would probably look at is the Panthers. Uh, you know, it would be interesting if Baker Mayfield like has like this this grudge or this edge that all of a sudden comes out of him, just goes like all Drew Brees going to the the Saints way back then type of thing. But you know, if 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 that were to happen, I, I think that would be incredible. Uh, but you know, again, it's 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 definitely going to be roster wise. You're going to have to look at the Buccaneers and be like, yes, yeah, Tom Brady going to allow uh, them to lose that many games? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, so I'll definitely have to agree with you on the Buccaneers. Yeah, I mean, it'll take Mayfield playing at a playoff level uh, at quarterback for that team to to take a jump or at least you know grab a playoff berth. But um, you know, he he is capable. It's not. Uh, out mm-hmm. of the question, he does that, and you look at the weapons uh, that Carolina has with Moore and McCaffrey hopefully being healthy. I mean, that could be a pretty dangerous team. Um, I like the Saints also to just get up, you know, get into the playoffs. I think they have one of the best defenses uh, in the league. Um, you know, they're going to be kind of moving into the Dennis Allen era themselves, and you'll know, see what Winston can do with uh, Michael Thomas coming back from injury, and then Kamara. We just don't know, you know, what kind of suspension will face, if any. So it's it's a little bit up in the air on the offensive side, but in the same sense, I just feel like that defense and kind of the leaders of that team have been there for a while for them to at least, you know, be competitive. Yeah, no, that that's a good pick. Yeah. It, and yeah. Losing Sean Payton, losing that little bit of continuity. That's the only reason why I guess I was like, yeah, I don't know if they can do anything there uh, with regards to this coming season, but no, it'll be exciting. Uh, you know, seeing, uh, uh, see if Winston uh, can, you know, take things to the next level for this team. Uh, they certainly have a lot of talent. It's just, you know, can they add it all up, you know? Um, but yeah, very excited to see, I think what happens in, in this division. Um, but yeah, got to go with the bucks here. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, NFC East. Um, this might come as a surprise. I'm picking the Philadelphia Eagles. I think that they have the deepest roster in that division. Um, you know, their offensive line grades out number one for uh, pro football focus. So, uh, you, you know, pair that with Hertz and then bringing over AJ Brown from the Titans with Devontae Smith. Um, still got Miles Sanders, Gainwell. Um, you got Goddard now with no more competition. I just feel like the offense could be somewhat of a juggernaut if Jalen Hurts puts together a um, you know, a, a Lamar Jackson light type year, or you know, pot- potentially he's looking at like a Kyler Murray type breakout. If he can take that step as a quarterback, it really, I mean, a lot of weight is put on Jalen Hurts' shoulder here. I mean, I feel like even if he can play like, I don't know, if, if you're interested in Trey Lance, I am, um, you know, those two will have, I think, very similar seasons. And I think they're very, you know, very capable with, you know, the strong rosters that they have to kind of take those steps. So um, I'm going with the Eagles. Uh, Wayne, what do you, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I I I would go with the Eagles, uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be all uh, counter. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with the Cowboys. I'm gonna go with the Cowboys <laughs> on, for no reason really whatsoever. I mean, yeah, you're you're right that the Eagles do have the better overall roster. Uh, but there's always something I feel like with the the Cowboys. It always seems like when there's not that expectation to win, they all of a sudden like you know pull something out. So. Um, but I do agree. I think the Eagles have the best roster. I think they've surrounded Jalen Hurts with as ma- many things as they can in order for him to succeed uh, and have a solid defense. So, so there's really no reason. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna say Prescott all of a sudden says, "Hey, maybe I'll you know not get hurt and 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 you know put us some numbers and everything and and carry things out even without Amari Cooper." So uh, I, I think for whatever reason they'll be fine and and win the division. Uh, but I, yeah, I, for no reason whatsoever. So, <laughs> yeah. I, and I, I actually have the Cowboys in third. Uh, I, I think the Washington commanders are going to get the second, yeah. uh, second place out of that division. I, I, I think the Cowboys are going to be bad. I don't think they're gonna be terrible, but I'll just say, you know, if I'm saying the commanders are eight and nine, I'm thinking like a seven, 10 type finish for the Cowboys. I just think, you know, putting extra weight on, on, you know, Dak, uh, you know, he hasn't really shown that he can do a lot with a great you know, set of weapons. And I feel like Elliot's only getting older. Uh, you hope that Tony Pollard takes that step, but I, I really feel like losing Cooper is a huge loss. Gallup's not fully healthy just yet. Um, so you're putting a lot of, you know, pressure on CD lamb to just kind of carry the offense in a lot of ways. And uh, outside of Micah Parsons on defense, I struggle to kind of figure out, you know, I think Demarcus Lawrence, if he can stay healthy, could be a good pairing on the other side. And uh, you know, 
Hopefully uh, some of the younger secondary uh, kind of steps up, but I always feel like that's been a liability for them. I just, and I don't trust Mike McCarthy. <laughs> I kind of like <laughs> following guys on first take, just like, Hey, you've got, you know, Sh- Sean Payton's kind of like just waiting in the wings. And then you got, you know, your offensive coordinator and your defensive coordinator should probably be your head coach. Like, I, I think there's gonna be a lot of turmoil in Dallas this year. That's all I'm saying. I just feel like there's going to be a lot of chat and I feel like it's going to be just a really uh, odd season for them. Yeah, yeah, I know for sure. I mean, that's that's how the Cowboys are, right? I feel like there's always going to be drama. It's like it's like uh, it's like some sort of Real Housewives, basically, just with a bunch of dudes, you know. So uh, I think that's exactly what the uh, Cowboys are. But yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you know if they do anything or yeah, if they completely finish third or fourth, right? So yeah, uh, and then to round it off with the NFC West. Um, I'm going to go with the 49ers. I, I just love their, uh, their depth on the defensive line. I love what Shanahan does um, on the offensive side with play calling. I think Trey Lance, uh, you know, being backed by Garoppolo as of now um, is a great plan. Just give the kid, you know, all the leeway in the world to, to kind of run with this offense. Um, you know, they brought Debo Samuel back, you know, thankfully for them, that would have been a, it would have been a different pick for me if they didn't have Debo, if they, you know, somehow made a trade with the jets or something like that, or, whatever else we were predicting around the draft um, period. But uh, no, I just think this team's like, you know, they're established. Um, They know their game kind of like the Baltimore Ravens. I feel like they play just a similar style of football, Um, you know, and I've got my thoughts about the Rams, but I just want to kick it back to you um, before I go too deep into it. No, I mean, I think those are great points. Like I think, you know, the Rams defending uh, Super Bowl champions, uh, they they definitely, you know, they added Wagner. It's like, yeah, they added like players that kind of were, you know, or were or in their prime and everything a little bit. Um, and yeah, again, there's always those memes of like, do they have, do they believe in the salary cap at all? Like they feel like they, they play by different rules, right? Uh, so it is hard to like, I guess, be like, yeah, the, the Rams defending world uh, champions or the Super Bowl champs uh like how can we kind of go against them um but you know the the niners definitely are a great team in, in how they're constructed I, I i think again i might go the all counter on that I'm, i might pick if i were to pick a team that maybe not to bet but just for the kicks of it uh I'll, i would probably pick the cardinals uh even though uh Kyle murray doesn't watch tape apparently uh i think I, you know i think the roster that they have right now i think it's Fine, it's good. I think you know maybe they take it take it to the next level. They they had a real. I think it was like a good start. I believe that I think they had a good start last season, uh, and then things kind of tapered off. But you know, I think that they would learn from that. Uh, I think they would just uh, uh, maybe it's just my misbelief or whatever. But I think that they'll build off what they uh, accomplished last season and uh, hopefully take it to the next level. Um, you know, Isaiah Simmons, one of the best defensive talents out there, uh, along with JJ Watts. So you know, that's my opinion, but. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm always trying to go for the other other guy and be all counterculture. I think at least, at least when it comes to the NFC, AFC, no. I think we're firmly stand pat on everything that we have there. So yeah, yeah. My only and my only slight to the Rams is you know when you win a championship, I feel like it just takes um, you know a certain amount of gumption to just come back and and run it back. So I always have hesitation picking a team to kind of go back and repeat. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like it gets proven year after year. Uh, you know, teams that go to the Super Bowl, I feel like next year, everybody wants to put, you know, heavyweights on them and the odds, you know, making pools and things like that. And, um, you know, losing Von Miller is going to be big. We don't know what's going to happen with Odell Beckham yet. Um, you know, they lost Robert Woods to an ACL injury. And now he's on the Titans and they brought in Allen Robinson, um, who I'm just happy for. I mean, I, you know, too bad he didn't make it with the Bears, uh, you know, past last season. It was, it was an ugly year um, for him and for everybody in Chicago. But, uh, it's just kind of like it's got a little bit of a new mix over there um, on offense. And then um, just hearing that Stafford may have some elbow concerns. I mean, any pitcher, you know, you look at pitchers around the MLB and it's like, you know, guys get surgery all the time. I mean, who's not to say, you know, quarterback could have, you know, similar arm concerns uh, depending on his delivery mechanics, you know, how much, how much wear and tear he's put on his arm over the years. Like if there's any, you know, concerns with Stafford going this year, I just don't know who they have to go to after him. And, uh, I mean, that'll really hurt Cups numbers. Um, you know, I don't know what Akers and Henderson could possibly do if there's a backup quarterback situation going on. But, uh, 
yeah, I just I just feel like the Niners are a little bit more protected in that in that aspect of their game. I mean, they could go to Garoppolo if Lance struggles. Um, you know, so it's kind of a, a nice uh insurance policy that they have there. And uh, you know, I think they'll just come out a little bit more motivated, a little bit more fire in their bellies this year. No, for sure. And it's like I'm trying to I think I'm looking at like an SI article. I believe that the last back to back Super Bowl winners were Patriots go figure 0405. So it's like, you know, that hasn't, it's hard to believe 0405. Like, yeah, I think we're high school, right? But it's like, yeah, it hasn't happened since then, right? So, uh, yeah, so it's, it, it's just getting harder and harder to, uh, to, uh, double up, I guess. So, yeah, it, there's usually some sort of withdrawal. Are they better? Are they not? You know, it's hard to say. The margin, I think, on that isn't too much. So, um, yeah, I, I think it just kind of goes to the fact it is hard to compete in the NFL. So you, you almost want to bet against them in that sense. Uh, in this case, especially yeah, when they have two uh, teams uh, in their division that could possibly overseat them, um, you know, with their respectable talents. So, yeah, I think it's, uh, it'll be interesting, I think, to see what happens to them, though. For sure. Um, so I guess with that, that rounds out all of our kind of division recaps. Um do you want to move into some sort of playoff predictions? I mean, do you have maybe conference championships in mind for the AFC NFC at this point? Yeah, at least for the AFC in terms of uh, I, I just picked, uh, you know, I don't want to go too brainiac about figuring out, uh, you know, who's going to what, what the record's going to be, who's going to be at the first seed and all that fun stuff. But um, I out of the AFC, I have the Ravens uh, coming out, actually. I, I think. Yeah, I think the two best teams, in my opinion, at least right now, are the Ravens. Um, and I was going to say the Chargers, but the, so, for some whatever reason, the Chargers are always like, not, they're good, great, always great on paper, but they can never like, you know, uh, put it all together and, and win the championship there. Um, although this roster is pretty damn stacked. Uh, I think it'll be the Ravens and the Bills. Um, I, I, I think that those are my two picks. They're probably the most two, two complete teams. Uh, I would say uh, in in the NFL, honestly. So, uh, you know, yeah, maybe, yeah, sure. The Ravens don't have maybe a killer wide receiver yet, but, you know, Bateman or Andrews, you know, definitely can be considered a wide receiver there. So um, I, I, I just think that they're, they're two most talented teams, two really great defenses. Uh, I think uh, the Ravens defense will pick it up uh, this season, uh, you know, despite some, uh, troubles in the previous couple of seasons. They have a new defensive coordinator who I think will know how to use them based off, you know, the short givings that I think Martin, uh, Martin Vail, uh, Dale had last season, we just blitzed all the time because all his players were injured. So, uh, you know, I think with a healthy roster, I think they also have new trainers now and everything. So I think they will be a lot better going into this season. Uh, Lamar Jackson's, you know, he looks really good uh, coming in, you know, I think he like gained some weight, got some muscle and everything so hopefully hasn't doesn't lose too much speed there but um you know i i think they're just you know i think they're just primed to to make a good run and they are my pick for the afc so now yeah. what do you think I'm, I'm with you with the three teams you threw out there um i kind of ran through it on paper I, i'm gonna go with the bills over the chargers in the afc championship i'm with you on your opinion of the chargers though i mean i feel like this is year one of them breaking out for me so you know, the Bengals were able to miraculously do it in their second year with Burrow, Chase, all the other guys. I feel like this could be Herbert's chance to be Joe Burrow in that sense. Um, I don't have a ton of confidence in that, but I also feel like I just love the upside of that team. I just, I love like the mouthwatering upside that a Herbert to Allen with, Ek, you know, Eckler. And then you got a, you know, nice offensive line. You've got some defensive playmakers all over the field. I mean, if they can bring that all together, I think that'll be exciting. I still don't think it's good enough to beat Buffalo. I think Buffalo, you know, got a taste last year um, after having a good year the season prior. It's their time. I mean, they're going to have a lot of weight and expectations on their shoulders, especially Josh Allen this year, but I think he'll deliver. I mean, I think he's that good. Um, you know, whether he's good enough to seal the entire deal, we'll find out. But um, I think it is their year. And if the game's played in Buffalo, you know, having Los Angeles Chargers, you know, scurry on up to it like a snowy outdoor, you know, madhouse with a bunch of fans doing, you know, backflips and power bombs through tables outside. I mean, I think they're going to get a little scared and you know, I think the bills will, will seal it at home. Got it. No. Yeah. I, I think that's a great pick, man. The bills. 
Yeah, I know. I, I do. I think it'd be great for the game uh, if the Bills uh, take it to the next level and win it again, especially because of that that performance uh, last last playoffs from Josh Allen. But um, yeah, I'm still gonna pick. Yeah, my good old Ravens. See Lamar take it to the next level and yeah, uh, have a healthy roster. So, uh, but yeah, what's who is your pick uh, coming out of the? NFC and if you want to talk about the seedings too and everything that go go for it man <laughs> this one was tough for me because I, I really wanted to push the Eagles like I really I tried you know I tried tried to like find a way for the Eagles to to kind of move move forward there but if if they end up the four seed the way I have it ranked then they would take down the top wild card who would be the Los Angeles Rams and if I'm picking the Rams to be number five that means that Stafford's healthy means that the majority of their team's there and I just can't see the defending champs losing to Philly in kind of their breakout year, you know, in the same sense. So I had a really tough time with that one. Um, but ultimately I, I took the top two seeds that I have there. And it's going to be Tampa Bay, Green Bay. I know that Green Bay looked absolutely foolish last year against the Niners, but in the way that my seeding plays out, the Green Bay Packers would again host San Fran. I just couldn't see them doing the same thing twice. Like I can't, I couldn't see them, you know, falling to their knees again, especially when they kind of retooled their offense and, you know, retooled the defense. So they're like almost like acting like the 49ers or I'm like, it is the, you know, uh spy versus spy in the sense, you know, white versus black. It's kind of like, who's going to win. But, uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers has to get over that. Um, but essentially when I've got the bucks and the Packers and the bucks are going to be hosting and give me, give me TB 12 every single day. Um, I love their, their entire roster, um, all their new additions, you know, the veteran leadership, uh, again, TB 12. So I'm going to go with the Buccaneers uh, making it to the Super Bowl again. That's, that's who I picked too. So <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, it's like, yeah, you can't have a you know, couple of years, right? Like it has to, you can't have any continuity. It's the NFL, right? So uh, yeah, I, 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 I picked the Bucs. I think roster wise, great division or road to get to, uh, the the Super Bowl, I think it, it, it works great for them. Uh, and yeah, you, it, hard to go against TB12. Uh, you know, again, a lot of continuity, I think, with the team. Uh, less, there's going to be less drama now. You know, I guess with uh, without AB. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what, what happens there. But I, I definitely think the Bucks, with everything that's been happening, history on top of having. The best player ever. Uh, I think that they'll they'll probably go to the Super Bowl. At least that's my pick. I think they'll be. Uh, I'll go with my my crazy team, uh, the, the Cardinals. I'll go with them uh, in the in the championship. But I think uh, it is a it is a country for old man here. So let's let's go with the old guy. Sounds good. And then I guess you got to predict your Super Bowl. So it sounds like for you, you've got the Ravens and the Bucks uh, squaring off. So who, who are you taking there? I'm picking the old guy, and he's gonna retire finally. <laughs> like, 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 what? It was like a tease. It was like, oh, hey, maybe I'll do that. Oh, you know what? Maybe not anymore. So, uh, I think now he's gonna be like, okay, I, I gotta go out a winner. I think that's his whole thing. I think he was like, you know, I'm getting bored here. Well, what do I need to do? Oh, I need a, I need a win. Like, I need to win the mm-hmm. Super Bowl. Go out, go out on that. Kiss my Super Bowl model wife. You know, hug my family and everything. I think that's what he wants. And. I hopefully, you know, for the sake of like the NFL moving on from his existence, may not that, but moving on uh, to his next chapter in his life, uh, I, I think he will go uh, out a winner, um, much to my chagrin, since I guess the Ravens are my my AFC team in a way, right? So, um, yeah, I think I'm picking the Bucks again. You know, the roster is great. I think Todd Bowles is definitely underrated. I think as a coach, just had a bad deal. I think with you know the worst organization in the NFL. So, uh, so you know, I, I think that uh, he'll go out the winner there, and uh, yeah, uh, go out in style and the best Tom Brady way as possible. So, but yeah, what about you? I mean, everything. So for me, it'd be you know the Bills and the Bucks, and everything that you know was kind of working through mentally, just like. You know, how would this game turn out? Uh, how would Josh Allen look, you know, in the in the bright lights? It's like, I want to just say, like, yeah, the Bills are my clear choice. But there's just something inside. It's just like, you know, Tom Brady's not going to allow that to happen. And, uh, you know, I can just see it being like, you know, Josh Allen's, you know, ability to get to that game, to kind of go through it, experience it. Um, I feel like he's much more qualified than even, like, Burrow was last year to be in that game and to, like, understand what it feels like to compete at that level. 
I just can see him maybe getting a, a bit overwhelmed uh, in that game. And I just think that there's just too much experience on Tom's side where I feel like he would pick apart, you know, the defense in, in his own way. And uh, I, I could see them willing their way to a victory there too. So, uh, you know, as much as I want to crown the bills, I, and I really do, cause I, I'm excited about that team and I really like, uh, you know, their core and everything. Um, yeah. I'm just going to have to side with uh, Tom Brady here again too. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely one of those like story things, right? It's like, do you let the the the, the young buck uh, kind of take take place of the the older guy? Although it's like, you know, Josh Allen is he like Patrick Mahomes necessarily? No, not really. But at the same time, he's he's good of a gunner, young gunner in the NFL. So, uh, but yeah, it's hard to go against Tom Brady, especially when you don't have the Giants' defensive line uh, to to attack him apparently. So, um, but yeah, I. I, I it, you know if you if you ever watch like man in the arena like you'll understand like this it's kind of a psycho and you kind of want the psycho to win just so you can you know shut him up you know so and hopefully he just moves on and uh enjoys retirement finally so <laughs> yeah i've got one question for you before we what? break with uh standings and everything else like that but uh i'm gonna name three teams for you and i want you to tell me who you think is gonna be the best team of you know teams we didn't really discuss um, but in the AFC, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Cleveland Browns, and the KC Chiefs, of, of those three, you know, which one would you have the most confidence in uh, having a good year this year? I mean, it's hard to go against the the Chiefs, I would say. Uh, I mean, they're all interesting, right? Um, uh, the Steelers, you know, they, they don't have Roethlisberger, but again, Roethlisberger was kind of like, you know, just out there in a way, like he, he, he kind of left it all. I uh, didn't have anything else to give. So uh, Trubisky definitely has some upside and, you know, with Pickett, I guess, too. Uh, they have one of the better, I think, trios, maybe top, at least top 10, like trios of wide receiver. Uh, and then also Najee Harris uh, on the offensive side and then the reigning defensive player, too. So, uh, you know, had a good season last season or kind of surprising there. And then Tomlin, you know, one of the best coaches ever, really. So, um, but, you know, it is hard to go against Mahomes. I, I do like I do like the idea that they um, kind of built the the Chiefs built uh, you know a team that is made a little bit made for to spread out a little bit more. They kind of divvied up you know Hill's contract, if you will, to like several other wide receivers. So it's like okay, you know the, the teams aren't just going to be focusing on Hill and then uh, Kelsey and the more intermediate routes, right? So um, I do like that they're that they are able to spread out a little bit more. Uh, and you know, they didn't get, I don't think they really even got too much like worse or anything like that. You know, they're secondary. Yeah. I think they got some rookies there now, uh, to help shore it up. Uh, but you know, I, I still think that they have enough talent to at least make a push to like the playoffs maybe, or, um, you know, uh, uh, have a good record there. Browns, man, that whole Watson thing and everything <laughs> that is nuts. Right. And then at the same time, you know, Brissett's actually a capable quarterback. Like people forget he was, pretty decent and when he was in the Colts um but you know and they have a really great roster it's just yeah I it's it's hard for me to pick them to uh go any further uh or to move a, move up I guess what they what they had last year uh especially yeah with Brissett now more so and then yeah who knows what what's going to happen with Watson for like basically you know like uh you know, well, at least six games, right? <laughs> I know the NFL is like, yeah, that's too generous or whatever. So, uh, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of question marks for the Browns. So, uh, with that, but great roster, just yeah, I don't know if this is the year for them. So, uh, but yeah, which did, did I answer correctly? Or <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, we're on the same page here. I mean, I, I have the Chiefs as my five seed. Um, I forgot to throw in the Broncos into this discussion because I, I think we didn't even touch on them as a team. I think they're. Uh, going to move their way probably into like a seven seed, at least in my predictions, just from, mm -hmm. you know, having Russell there is going to shore things up. Um, you know, I like the running back situation. Wide receivers are nice. Um, seems, seems a little bit too young, maybe on the defensive side. And that's kind of like where I'm getting at with, uh, you know, mm -hmm. looking at the Pittsburgh Steelers. It just feels like um, they just come off as being like maybe a little bit too inexperienced, especially at the quarterback position, um, you know, just skills players and things like that outside of like TJ Watt and Cam Hayward. Um, Minka Fitzpatrick, I love, but, um, yeah, it just, I feel like they're going to be, they're going to be learning a lot this year on the fly. I mean, I still think they might be like an eight, you know, nine and 18, maybe eight and nine, but, uh, 
Mm-hmm. It'll be tough. And Cleveland it was funny because I, you know, I was, I was running through and looking at some uh, analysis of all teams and stuff. But uh, yeah, Pro Football Focus ranks their roster as number six overall. You know, Cleveland Browns, and uh, I'm assuming that's with Deshaun Watson. But uh, mm-hmm. you just think about the talent that they have on that team, the offensive line. Um, you know, they've got Miles Garrett. Uh, they're bringing back Jadavian Clowney. Um, you know, they brought over Amari Cooper. Um, seems like Donovan Peoples Jones, people are high on, and they drafted David Bell. Seems a little inexperienced on the wide receiver side. Great running backs, but without Watson there, you know, they're they're saying six now. That could be 17. We don't know. Um, it's just too much of a question mark. Uh, even if he's fully healthy, I mean, I just feel like, you know, he's gonna get six no matter what. That already puts them kind of in like a you know, one and five, two and four, maybe whole to start off the year. And, you know, Deshaun Watson's not known for like winning either. Like, I feel like mm. we had this talk a while back, but he was four and 12 in his last full season with the Texans. I mean, I feel like he's a little overrated in my, in my own like book. I, I'd say, I think like the talent hits you in the face, but I don't know. I don't know if it always translates into winning. Uh, but, if that roster is as good as it is, I mean, they've got a they got a puncher's chance to maybe get a, you know wild card berth and and find their way into the into the yeah. tournament. But uh, yeah, just wanted to touch on those teams because I know they're very high profile, especially you know, it's across sports. I feel like that's all you know ESPN or other analysts will talk about are these like four teams like every you know every other show that I watch or something of the sort. But uh, just want to get your takes because I know we skipped over them. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think with the Browns, like, honestly, yeah, if they're healthy, I mean, that's the biggest thing, right? If they're healthy, then they could definitely, you know, maybe squeeze out a game or two, uh, you know, away from the Ravens or Bengals. Like, they're very capable of doing that with the roster that they have or, or really any other team. It's just, yeah, if if they're healthy, then they could definitely, you know, ma- win 10 games or something like that and make a playoff uh, push. So, um, yeah, again, the roster's – talent can definitely go a lot, uh, c- can go far, so – so we'll see. Um, did you want to go through award predictions? Do you have um, guys in mind for, you know, let's let's maybe start with the NFL MVP. Did you have a, a favorite? Yeah, MVP wise, uh, I'm going to go with uh, Justin Herbert, uh, quarterback extraordinaire for the Chargers. Uh, a lot of, I think I mentioned there's a lot of continuity going with that team. And I think that's always a plus to have for an MVP. It's like either they add, uh, some big free agents or, you know, uh, uh, yeah, essentially big free agents. And then right now, you know, they, they really just, they didn't do too much, but at the same time, they had a really talented team, I think last year. And I think they're going to build off from it, uh, uh, this year, um, uh, on top of that, you know, a lot of people, yeah, don't, you know, there's a kind of a connection, I think with the defense it, it, in a way too, with the, the defense having more of a pass rush, creating more turnovers is what I'm anticipating with JC Jackson and that pass rush now. So, I think they'll have more opportunities to get more yardage there. Um, and then also it's like, hey, if they're just winning games and everything, uh, you know, the, the then I think the play calling could be a little bit more conservative, if you will, and lower uh, or the interceptions, I think, for for Herbert a little bit. So I, I think that's what I'm thinking going into uh, to, to the season is that Herbert, everything just seems positioned really well for Herbert to have a successful campaign. Uh, and then, yeah, Laura's uh, kind of built off what he had last season and then Laura's interceptions, which I think traditionally is like, you know, you look at Aaron Rodgers and like his, his, his stats when he won his MVPs, like, like one of the lower, uh, uh, interception ratios, CD interception ratios, like in, in NFL history. So, you know, that's, that's always kind of a predictor I, I think is like yardage T- TDs and then, you know, having a low in- interception ratio there. It's like, yeah, they didn't, you know, cost the team anything. So. Um, but yeah, uh, we'd love to hear who your MVP pick is though. Yeah. Um, already been talking about him, but Josh Allen, uh, is going to be my MVP. I feel like he does it with his arm, his legs. I like what he was showing with Gabriel Davis last year, kind of building that new connection. He's already got digs. There has been a stud for him. Um, yeah, I'm just really high on this team. I think that they're going to go into this year, just, you know, locked and loaded. I think they're going to want to embarrass some teams. I mean, I really feel like they're going to make a statement this year and kind of push their way, you know, I guess like kind of bully teams into, you know, being uh, a little bit scared to play them and, you know, especially going into playoff season, I feel like they're just primed and ready to go. So uh, yeah, I like what, I like what uh, is ahead for Josh Allen this season. Yeah. How about that? I feel like our two teams are like the, the you know, to watch or the people are like Josh Allen and the bills and Herbert and the chargers. Right. I think, 
pretty much. <laughs> yeah, the, those teams are just stacked, and they have great young quarterbacks who are kind of have a little bit more upside, I think. And I mean, that'll be awesome if uh, either of them win. I think so. But yeah, I think Josh Allen actually was like my second pick. I was kind of going back and forth between both of them. So, gotcha. Um, how about an offensive player of the year and a defensive player of the year? Yeah, I mean, offensive. Uh, yeah, it would either have to be Herbert or Josh Allen, I think. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> right? Uh, I, I, you know, I guess to go alternative, like if I had to pick like a player that is not a quarterback, uh, uh, probably I, I would think Jonathan Taylor again. You know, uh, I think, you know, with Matt Ryan being a little bit older and everything, I think like, okay, let's still like, uh, you know, kind of take those, you know, have rely on Taylor's legs and everything to carry the load a little bit. Um, and then utilize uh, Matt Ryan, you know, for the intermediate passing. So uh, that's who I have. You know, I think he won last year, actually. So uh, not not really a surprise, but I, I think he'll repeat just because, you know, it seems like uh, that team is just kind of built for uh, Taylor just to, like, uh, kind of run with it. <laughs> no pun intended. So um, uh, uh, alternative pick, though, would be Najee Harris. I think he, he's, he might have the best fantasy value. Uh, out of uh, like any player at the moment, but yeah, that's those are those are who my, my two picks would be. Uh, but I think Taylor just might repeat. So yeah, I, I like both of those picks. Um, I think they'll both have great years. I'm gonna go with uh, Justin Jefferson on Minnesota. I feel like he already put up a monster season last year, and he's just kind of continuing to move into his own prime. I feel like he built a really good connection with Cousins last year. Um, you know, bringing back Thielen, I think that's a good you know, complimentary piece that takes a little bit of the attention off, but won't take a lot of the, you know, receptions or yardage away from him in the same sense. I feel like Thielen's probably in one of his last, you know, solid seasons, I'd say is like a wide receiver too, uh, at least in that mix. We'll see what Dalvin Cook can do over 17 games. I feel like he gets injured quite a bit. So if he's on the field, I feel like he takes, you know, some of the, you know, attention or even just, uh, you know, um, possessions away from Justin Jefferson in the same sense. I feel like he kind of opens up the offense too, but uh, if he's not there, then I feel like cousins is scrambling because of a shitty offensive line. And he's just going to be, you know, finding Justin Jefferson in any way possible just to get him, you know, out of an emergency or, you know, a sack situation. And uh, I just think he's going to get a lot of garbage receptions and yardage. And I see a lot of touchdowns for him too, especially in the NFC North uh, outside of playing the Packers. But uh, so that's my offensive player of the year. Um, do you have any thoughts do, there? Or, yeah. I was say, do you think he's gonna uh, have hit two thousand yards? I don't know. I, I, you know, I'd have to think about what it requires to to get there. Um, you know, did Cup Cup broke that line last year, right? Did he set the all time records for that in reception touchdowns last year or something for? It, yeah, I think yard, yeah, yardage he did. I don't think he eclipsed two thousand. I think it was like nineteen thousand something, I believe. So, um, yeah. yeah. So, but I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Cup's year was spectacular. I mean, I can't remember a single season from wide receivers more impressive than his. I don't know if I'm at the same level this year with Justin Jefferson. I just, you know, I don't know if I'm, you know, that crazy about how great his season's going to be, but I do think his numbers are going to be pretty much off the charts. And uh, I don't know how you felt about thinking about running backs this year for fantasy or just like, who's going to be in the mix, but it feels a little bit like a slimmer crop this year. And I feel like the guys that, you know, we look at a Najee Harris, we look at a Jonathan Taylor. I mean, I think the Colts will be solid. Steelers might be solid, but it's like, I just don't know if those offenses are going to be like blow your brains out explosive. Um, and maybe that doesn't matter, but I'm kind of like, I don't know. I just kind of feel like going with a wide receiver seemed a little bit safer this year, not only for fantasy, but then for like, like an NFL award, like who would be the best offensive player? It just seems like this might be more of a wide receiver year for me. Yeah, uh, no, I, I agree. It's yeah. It, I think there's, it, there's been that trend, right. From going from uh, just supremely like uh, running backs to now, uh, you know, maybe a quarterback here and there or wide receivers basically just because of how things have played out. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think I agree with that. And you can never discount the workload, right? I think that's always been the fun part. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting what happens, you know, with Chubbs and and, uh, and the Browns, right? I know there's there's always like, uh, um, you know, I think Kareem Hunt's still there, right? <laughs> so it's like, you know, how's that workload going to balance? But it's like, that would be nice, though, if 
know, they, they, they run definitely a lot more, I think with Brissett and just not having Deshaun Watts in there. So like that could certainly be, you know, a nice, uh, you know, having either one of those again, uh, could be nice too. Um, and then Najee Harris, like, it, I don't know who's going to get more touches. Like it's either him or Taylor. Like, uh, I would probably pick, uh, just cause of Matt Ryan's there now, you know, with Pittman and white, white out. I, I think they're probably gonna get a little bit more passes because they have more confidence in a veteran quarterback than say uh, a veteran quarterback that actually has like a track record, <laughs> Then uh, yeah, Trubisky or, or Kenny Pickett. So um, I think they're just going to line up the box a little bit more uh, with Najee Harris. So even though they do have some wide receiver depth, um, yeah. So yeah, I I think those two are number one and number two for me. Um, wide out breakouts. I, I think we'll have to hear about your breakout or type of players or uh, kind of under the radar. But uh, Darnell Mooney from the Bears. I I think he'll be. Uh, I think I've seen like he's been looked at like drafted like I think maybe 60s or something like that and I, I think that's way too low so um, I think uh, he got like 140 targets this last season and I think with more seasoning now with Justin Fields uh, he's gonna hit and also like oh Justin Fields is the quarterback and building that continuity uh, I think you know they're, they're probably he's probably gonna get more targets probably 150 or more uh, and then probably have a higher completion percentage there, get more yardage. I think he had a thousand this previous season. We're probably, you know, I'm anticipating going to get 12, 1200, maybe 1300, uh, I think this season. So, uh, for a wide out, yeah, if you're looking for value, I think Mooney probably hits the bar there, but yeah. Do you get any other sleeper picks or, or anybody that you think is, has some upside? Yeah. I mean, I've already said Gabriel Davis. I think he's going to have a great year as a wide receiver two, possibly pushing on like a low end wide receiver one uh, for the Buffalo Bills. I think the volume will be there. I think he showed that he can put up, you know, some some massive numbers when given opportunities. I think he had a three touchdown game with like 150 plus yards one one game last year. Um, I could see Javante Williams uh, taking over the running back situation in Denver with you know Melvin Gordon kind of being in his twilight years as a running back and kind of like an RB one, I feel like one injury could put Gordon behind him. And I think once Javante Williams has, you know, the majority of those uh, carries, I think he's going to be, you know, just as big of a weapon as like a Najee Harris for the Denver Broncos. Um, I had one other guy. It's slipping my mind now because I'm darting around and, Oh, I think the chargers, I mean, with Mike Williams, I feel like we've been waiting on the Mike Williams breakout for a while, you know, Keenan Allen's still going to be consistent. I think that, you know, Eckler still gets a lot of screen passes and a lot of receptions out of the backfield. But, you know, I think Herbert's going to have enough volume in his game. Like you're saying, if he's an MVP candidate, he's going to have, you know, three guys that benefit from his, you know, big year. I feel like, you know, it's kind of like Mahomes when he had Hill, Kelsey, and, you know, Edwards Alaire, or, uh, you know, name the other player who would fill in the gaps for certain games. I feel like, He's going to be looking for that other guy, and I think that Mike Williams might be the beneficiary of those uh, of those attempts. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I think those are great ones. Uh, one other, I guess, wide out uh, would would be yeah, Jameson Crowder. I think I mentioned before with the Bills. It's like you know uh, he, he 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 got like similar numbers as Cole Beasley did when he, Cole Beasley was with the Bills. Except who was throwing to Jamison Crowder? Uh, Zach Wilson. So it's like, <laughs> you know, if he has somebody like, uh, like of Josh Allen's caliber throwing to him and, you know, uh, and having a, a team around him to, you know, take some of the pressure with Diggs, uh, with Davis and everything, it's like, yeah, uh, I think he could be primed for, I guess, you know, he's definitely been around and all that. But yeah, uh, you know, a thousand yards, especially for a PPR league, I think he'll, he would do great, uh, you know, that slot position that he ha has there. So, um, yeah, just one other person to uh, keep an eye out on, I would say. For sure. Um, how about on the defensive side of the ball? Do you have a, a player that's going to step out and, and be the most outstanding player this year? Yeah, so this this coincides. This coincides <laughs> with my uh, with my surprise pick, uh, the, the Dallas Cowboys, Micah Parsons. Damn, Damn. Yeah. all right. Is that who you got? I mean, that's, that's my guy. That's my guy. Yeah. I mean, go ahead. <laughs> say your piece, but I probably just like will just add an exclamation point to whatever you say. I mean, how can such a good player play for such a polarizing, you know, drama and filled team, right? So um, whether it's sacks, getting interceptions, he's a playmaker. And, you know, it, it's hard to have 
uh, you know, that kind of playmaker not get the credit that they deserve. You know, he was just a rookie last year, right? So it's like, you know, what can he do off this you know, coming season with a little bit more seasoning now and a full season? So, you know, it's usually a second or third season. That's like when players are like, all right, uh, you know, we're going to start, you know, taking things to the next level before teams start to, you know, figure things out and, and dilute the person a little bit. So uh, I think Micah Parsons, I don't know if there was any, like, I, I, maybe, I, yeah, I don't know any too many, or I don't have the numbers of like repeat ones, but you know, maybe Aaron Donalds or JJ Watts uh, probably repeated a few times there, but um, you know, so that's where I'm like, yeah, maybe not TJ Watt in this case, uh, although he's definitely a great player. You know, a lot of people are like, can he get 30 sacks this season? Who knows? Maybe if he does, then he definitely deserves it. But um, in terms of overall playmaker, you know, it's hard to get, go against Michael Parsons here. But, uh, yeah, want to hear your take now. <laughs> I mean, he just reminds me like a vintage Von Miller. I mean, he's all over the field. He's, you know, like you said, with sacks, tackles, it doesn't matter. I mean, he's getting the majority of, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the cleanup duty. I feel like even a Khalil Mack when, when he was in his prime, I feel like, you know, they got to compare him to. But, uh, yeah, ditto on what you said. Um Nothing else really needs to be added to that. I think he's going to have a standout year. I mean, I feel I still think like an Aaron Donald, you know, is in the, you know, probably the top spot of her overall defender. I mean, I think if you had to draft one or the other, I mean, if we weren't looking at like the next 15 years, you know, you'd be hard pressed for one season to not maybe take Donald over Parsons. But uh, mm-hmm. I just think the productivity, the output is going to be much higher for Parsons. And I'll get, you know, the majority of the looks there after being like just shy of, of winning it all uh, last year. I don't Sounds good. Yeah. Do you, do you you got any rookies, any rookie awards you want to give out? You got an offensive one that you maybe want to talk about? Yeah. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to stay in the NFC North for this one. I'm going to go with Christian Watson. I feel like he's, <laughs> I don't know, you know, what his upside is just yet. I haven't seen enough to be like, this is the guy, but I mean, I know what Alan Lazard is, you know, I know what, uh, what little Sammy Watkins is going to bring to an NFL team. So, you know, where are those passes going to go? I mean, I feel like he's going to get his receptions. He's going to get a significant amount of yardage. If I had to assume, I just feel like, you know, could he be in the 70 to 80 reception category this year with, you know, maybe approaching a thousand yards, maybe, you know, anywhere from uh, five to 10 touchdowns. Like it's all possible. Um, I kind of just felt like I wanted to pick the easiest path to who I think could win, you know, the rookie of the year honors and kind of looking at, um, you know, just the quarterbacks that are out there for this year, um, you know, running backs, maybe playing for really poor offenses. I mean, maybe a Brees Hall is somebody who you might get that kind of attention or a Kenny Walker out in Seattle, but it's like those teams are gonna be so garbage. I just don't feel like uh, the productivity or just like the sheer, you know, the, the output's going to be there if, 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 you know, other teams are coming in like, okay, yeah, let's put all the pressure in the world on, you know, Zach Wilson to throw footballs or, uh, you know, Drew Locke to, to beat us downfield, you know, so they'll stack boxes. And I think those guys will get hurt because of it. So I guess looking out around like the wide receiver pool and things like that, I was like, yeah, Watson's got a really good shot at, uh, you know, getting the majority of looks in, in Green Bay and who better to be paired up with than Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, no, I think that's a great pick. Uh, yeah, I, I, I remember when I was, uh, I, I almost said when I was a Bears fan, when uh, I was looking at <laughs> Bears uh, draft draft picks in the second round, I uh, certainly had Watson uh, on my list there, uh, just because the sheer physical talent that the person has, like, and and he he can actually like uh, he's he's great at um you know turning the corner too, you know on, on handoffs and everything, so it's not just like about chucking it up there and using his six foot five, four, three frame and, and all that to, uh, to you know, run and get balls and everything. But, you know, he can definitely kill you in different, in, in different avenues. Um, I think I was looking at, I was like, I had to pick one of the Ohio state, uh, wide receivers and I was debating between Olave and then Garrett Wilson. But then I thought, oh yeah, who's tossing to Wilson <laughs> Wilson. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sold on Zach Wilson, um, but I, you know, I, I'm much more sold on a more on a more veteran uh, genius Winston, I would say. So uh, I think Olave uh, will learn learn a lot from uh, Michael Thomas and and uh, Kamara and everything. I think there's enough enough talent uh, to be around him to like take some of that pressure off, and then also to learn too. So that's where I've seen Olave, who's a, what you know, I, you know, I, I watched the. 
the, the Justin Fields clips and everything when we got drafted draft Justin Fields. And I also remember watching the championship games and everything with Justin Fields uh, and just tossing to the lobby. And that was just, you know, I don't know, like we wanted, Bears fans wanted Chris Olave for sure and all that. But um, I think he's in a you know good situation and but with the Saints, again, with a veteran, uh, you know, veteran players and organization around him, I think he'll do great there and um, kind of strive and succeed. Maybe quasi Justin uh, Jefferson a little bit there, you know, with uh, you know a decent running back and and a wide, veteran wideout to kind of help him out with things. So that's kind of what I'm looking at uh, for a lobby. I think he's got that talent. So, but yeah, uh, what do you got on defense? On defense, uh, I was kind of going with a similar strategy on offense, is just finding teams that might have some supports in place for the person to kind of thrive and be able to like put up numbers. I feel like. Mm -hmm. Just on raw talent alone, I wanted to steer toward Hutchinson, but in the same sense, I'm just not as confident on the Detroit, you know, line to see him, you know, not getting, you know, uh, doubled up or, you know, plays moving away from his direction. I mean, I feel like that's what, you know, offensive might end up doing with a guy like him. Um, so I went with Trayvon Walker. I mean, I feel like I've heard really good things out of Jaguars camp about his explosiveness, his athleticism. And I feel like from the other side, he's going, you know, he's got Josh Allen on the other side, not the quarterback, but the, you know, the defensive end. So it's like, you know, to have somebody who's pretty highly graded, like a Josh Allen opposite you, you know, it kind of spreads the line, you know, out evenly and you got to play him maybe one-on-one -on -one. Um, with what I've been hearing. If, you know, he can get to the outside and you, know, you got guys like Matt Ryan and, you know, Orion Tannehill and, a, you know, uh, Davis Mills in your division, you get to see, you know, twice a piece. I mean, I feel like those are three in the box, slower quarterbacks that you know, might allow him to get double digit sacks in his first year. Um, it's kind of a, a little bit of a pipe dream there, but in the same sense, uh, you know, I feel like he's got the talent to be uh, a really nice number one overall pick and, and we'll see it, uh, you know, starting up soon. Yeah, no, I think he's a great pick. Uh, you know, I, I, I know, I know I see some like other uh, like draft sites and everything was are kind of predicting him too. Uh, yeah, you know, just kind of a weaker division compared to some other, you know, some other defensive talented um, uh, players that came out of the draft. So uh, I think that's a solid pick um, uh, for the sake of trying to find somebody else. I would probably say uh, I think uh, <laughs> he's got the swag uh, and good God, I think the Jets are going to have a lot of defensive reps. So I think they'll have a lot of, uh, you know, <laughs> targets and everything coming his way. And, you know. Again, everything I saw, he was like probably the top corner. Uh, I think he got steamly before him and everything. But um, Sauce Gardner, you know, very much uh, uh, like if you he did he had like zero touchdowns in his entire um, college career uh, allowed. So it's like shut down corner. I think he's great. He's got the he's got the swag. Got the he's got the Deion Sanders uh, persona for him so i definitely i mean his name is sauce for crying out loud so uh I, I i see him doing wonders i think he'll be great for the um the jets so um and yeah they're, they're definitely going to have a lot of people going after him uh a lot of pass heavy teams too you know since they're going to have tyreek hill uh, you might have to cover tyreek hill and then also stefan Diggs too so yeah Cool. I'm, I'm actually uh, I'm looking up right now AP Defensive Rookie of the Year winners um, of all time because I wanted to see who was the last cornerback to win it because um, I always think like he could be shut down and have like let's say three to four interceptions or something but still be like the best yeah. defensive player there but it's yeah. like I just don't know if it's like more of the vanity metrics like they want to see a certain level of tackles or sacks or something just to get eyeballs on it so I'm looking at this right now and it really yeah. does look like I got one in the last 20 years. No, sorry, two. I got Marcus Peters for the Chiefs in 2015 and Mar Marshawn Lattimore for the Saints in 2017. And then outside of that, it is literally all defensive ends and uh, defense, you know, defensive ends and linebackers for the most part. But there just we to go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. But did, did, how many of those teams had Zach Wilson uh, as a quarterback? You know? <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. just. Creating turnovers, you know, uh, fumbling the ball or whatever, uh, to give it to the defense, and then the defense is gonna, you know, they're they're just gonna get attacked a bunch. So that's my business case. Yeah, they're just gonna get a ton of reps. So it's impossible for Gardner to be like not not do something. But 
No, I think yeah, he'll yeah. definitely make, he'll definitely be an impactful player for them for sure. I like what you know we both liked what they did in the draft. Just um, you know mm-hmm. the talent they brought over in the first round and even later later rounds of the draft on both sides of the ball. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. It just it just seems like kind of funny how the NFL works. It's kind of like your uh, Oscars uh, metaphor, you know, <laughs> the analogy, I should say. It's like uh, you know, it's like. Co- you know comedians uh trying to win awards uh at the oscars yeah. you know it's like really unfair that they evaluate the way they, they do it's just yeah it's yeah, just yeah. uh yeah kind of how it happens yeah he's just gonna have to get a bunch of interceptions like like marshawn Lattimore, and uh marcus peters um but yeah i think if there's somebody to do it it'll be sauce gardner so sounds good cool um what else do we got on the agenda here now I think I was just looking for a coach of the year. I mean, do you have somebody that uh, stands out to you as like being able to kind of be in the mix for that award? Uh, what's it? Logic, right? Um, or is it not not logic? Yeah, I think they call him Logic uh, McDaniel's uh, <laughs> Miami. I think. I mean, it's something like the the GM uh, did a lot to help him and everything. But I think from everything I've read, and you know, I, I think to a uh, you know, for all his credit and all the the memes and everything, I think he'll do fine with Hill and, and take things up to the next level. And I think they'll be improved upon. Uh, I know there's a lot of question marks, but I, I think that they'll be uh, better this coming season. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be taking him, I think. so. Sounds good. Yeah, the guy I picked, it's not that I think he's a great football coach because I think he's made some bonehead calls with uh, clock management, but I think Brandon Staley, um, just, just having the chargers come out of that division after all the, you know, speculation this year about who in the AFC West is going to be representing that division. I feel like, um, you know, he'll be the beneficiary of, of kind of some great offensive play and, um, defensive side too, but just, um, you know, getting his name out there. I also was thinking about like Nick Sirianni on the Eagles, uh, you know, bringing them to a division crown, I think would say a lot in his second year. So, um, some interesting guys. Do I think they're the best coaches in the league? No, but that's kind of how that award goes. It's just like whichever team comes out of the division was like the lowest possible rank preseason. You know, that coach is the beneficiary of that team taking the biggest jump. Got it. Yeah. Well, is there is there a surprise team that you think that will like? Do you have a surprise team that might just like come out of nowhere? You think uh, if you were if you were to guess, uh, you know, is there any team like that? Man, you know, I guess looking at some of the predictions I put down, I mean, I feel like, you know, I think I think picking Philly to jump to like to being a division winner is is a little it's a little ballsy. I mean, it's not it's not crazy, but it, it's a little maybe out there. Um, and it's tough. I mean, I think New Orleans is going to have a really solid year. I think that uh, I don't know if they could win a division there, but I think that. Uh, you know, they could be a pretty dangerous team. Like again, if they have Kamara and they have Michael Thomas uh, come back healthy and like, we know what Kamara can do. I just, I don't know what Thomas can do at this, at this stage after his, you know, a couple of years being out. I mean, but they did, they do have a lobby. Like you said, they have Jarvis Landry now. Um, maybe Winston can take a step. If he can take a step as a quarterback or just be consistent all year. I think that defense will be strong enough for them to be, you know, maybe a night 49ers type team. I mean, maybe they could be as good as the Niners uh, or, you know, uh, Maybe just like a lighter version of the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, no, I think yeah, I like that. I like that pick. Um, I think my surprise team uh, that I, I would love to see. It's more so love to see is the team that's coached by Lovey Smith, uh, the Houston Texans. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, definitely like the best coach that the Bears have had in recent memory, at least. Uh, and you know, yeah, it'll be interesting if he gets this. What he does with uh, what he does with this shot. We got Davis Mills there. Like, it's a very like very bare bones team and all that. But you know, I I think that hey, they got nothing to lose, and sometimes you need that uh, going forward. So uh, we'd love to see the Texans make a, a a a step forward with regards to the team that they have with Lovey Smith here. Sounds good. I feel like we couldn't end this episode without at least talking about the Bears and their chances. I need I need some sort of project projection from you. I want to know how many wins or where in that division they'll end up. I think I think it I think they'll win 
Uh, I'm going to go with six games. I'm going to okay. go with six games. And bring it on Twitter trolls. I feel like everybody's predicting them. I met, said this the last episode. They're not that fucking good. Like, I don't know where they're <laughs> – like, unless somebody has a bet that uh, – that uh, Ibrafus is going to win like NFL coach of the year. He's this genius, this extreme motivator, which he seems like a great guy, but I just don't see them winning with this roster that many games or 10 games or more or whatever. So um, yeah, I'm thinking uh, six games, but what's your take? Um, I'm probably going to go with like four wins. I think this is going to be a really bad football team. And uh, when you were talking about, trolls or whoever whoever in chicago was like hyping them up i was like man you must be talking to some really drunk people or like some people are just a little bit out there like bear fan wise because i was i was kind of uh you know just seeing what they did last year with the pieces that they had and it was still an extremely underwhelming season it's like they did nothing but in, in my opinion lose or you know they went to the draft well which we were you know little critical of just just out of need but i mean i think we're excited about what they brought to the secondary it's just like this is also year one for those kids so it's like if that's one of the strengths that they're going to tout going into the year um with justin fields who unfortunately as much as i'd love you know and i i think that i think there is talent there i think that's somebody who we can look forward to but when he has really not a lot of uh guys to look to i mean if mooney has a breakout year i'll i'll be happy about that um maybe commit can be you know respectable, you know, Montgomery's back there with Herbert. I think that's a nice pairing just to like kind of bail him out a little bit, but uh, this is like a full development season for me. Uh, I think that actually the, the lower the amount of wins, maybe the better for us just to kind of like continue to build into next season. And uh, hopefully they start shelling out that money um, that they've been kind of, you know, holding in reserve here. So, uh, you know, um, I just don't have a lot of faith and, uh, you know, it's not that any of the other teams in the division are really like scary. I, I, I do think the Lions uh, going into the year, I don't like their defense really whatsoever, but I do like what they've been doing on the offensive line. Um, I do like some of their you know playmakers. I think they've got a really nice set of wide receivers uh, and a good tight end in Hawkinson. You got Swift and Jamal Williams out of the backfield. I mean, they don't have a quarterback, but like they almost have everything else. And it's like mm -hmm. if, if this is a year where um, you know, I don't think they're going to be pushing the Vikings for the second position, but I mean, I think they could be like a seven, a seven win team maybe this season. So yeah. it, it just, yeah, it all remains to be seen, but I just don't have a lot of faith. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. I, I, I think, it, you know, the, the smartest thing I've seen is like, we're just tanking to get the, the last Ohio state wide receiver for Justin Fields and uh, Jackson Smith, uh, Nick, and all. So I think that's the route. I'm happy with that. Let's just go that route. Pair up with Darnell Mooney. I think that'll be great going forth. Uh, you know, maybe draft some more offensive linemen or something like that, or more defensive talent. So um, I think that's the best route to go. Yeah, you know, it is year one, and it's not to say like I, I don't like the Bears or I, mean, I absolutely like the Bears, but it's not to say I don't feel optimistic about the future direction. It's just that the you know uh, polls came in with not that much draft capital. He wants to build the draft. That's how he does. That's how he knows. Um, and that's honestly like how a lot of great organizations start off is being able to build through the draft. So I like his long-term thinking there. Uh, I just don't see that the, the bears are going to, you know, take a step forward. I think, uh, with regards to at least a win loss record, even though they have a weaker schedule than they did last year. And obviously there's a new coaching regime, uh, that, that's coming in. So I just don't see it there, but Hey, I'd love to be wrong. I would love to be wrong. Uh, and have us, you know, go to the Super Bowl, win 13 games, go crazy. So, yeah. Yeah. If we are wrong, Justin Fields will be one of the best quarterbacks in the league. I would love that. that. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. If we are wrong, <laughs> we're absolutely wrong. Like Justin Fields is going to look like Lamar Jackson this year. Yeah. But, yeah. but I, I, I would love to be wrong. I would love to be wrong and everything. Yeah. So. But Wayne, but Wayne. I'm never wrong. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Come back to us, Twitter trolls or Instagram trolls. Uh, a year from now, let's see what happens. And uh, yeah, give us uh, give us hell. So, <laughs> all right, sounds good. Well, I think that's a wrap. Uh, you know, all the coverage in the world over all the divisions, players, uh, you know, awards, everything else, su even Super Bowls. So, looking forward to a fun season. And uh, you know, with the Ball and Breakfast podcast, I'm Patrick Miller alongside Wayne Pua uh, signing off.